Black Out Loud Media Group. Welcome back to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast, the place where poetry meets conversation. I'm your host, Terrence P. Elmore. And before we get into today's topic, make sure you hit that plus sign so you don't miss an episode. Also, please subscribe to my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. And if you find any value in this episode or any other episodes, make sure you leave a heartfelt review. So with that being said, let's get to it. What's up, everybody? I'm back. Hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday, and I hope you all are enjoying your holiday season. Got a lot of things in store for you, and I hope you enjoy it. So buckle, buckle up. Hopefully, it's going to be an exciting ride for you. Hopefully, you will enjoy it. And speaking of the holiday season, I just want to encourage anybody who's feeling depressed or lonely or just not themselves during this time to, if you can, talk to somebody, find somebody that you you trust that you can talk to or maybe a professional. But if you're dealing with things, things that are really bringing you down, things that are, are making you slip into what you feel like is depression, you know, this time of year hits people differently. Some people, if they go through things during the holidays, it may skip a holiday or it may be continuous for a couple of holidays. But whatever the case may be, and, and if you're on the other side, holidays are a happy time for you. You're not depressed or you're not sad about anything. Check on other people to make sure that they're good. Don't take for granted your happiness without trying to spread that to somebody else. Don't forget about people, especially people you know who've lost loved ones um, during this time or even recently especially those people make sure you reach out to them and let them know that you're thinking about them and that's kind of where i want to i want to touch on um you know a few things today uh the main thing is about forgiveness and unforgiveness Um, but before we get into that i want to give a progress report on my book uh by the time this episode airs i will be complete with my book um it's not going to be out this year as i anticipated i as i was diligently Working on the completion, I realized that we're coming into the holidays and the mail runs slow on the holidays. So I didn't want to have the pressure on myself of trying to receive my proof copy back, making sure everything looks good before I have it published. So my book, Pain is Not Our Only Paintbrush, will be out in February. So mark your calendars. I'm going to do a pre-sale soon. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, Make sure you're following my page on Instagram, the Brown Sugar Cafe. Also, my Facebook page, the Brown Sugar Cafe. That information will be on there as well. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my blog, the Brown Sugar Cafe dot blog. I also have a newsletter, which is separate. I have the link in the show notes. But let's jump into this topic about forgiveness. Now, when we talk about forgiveness, we and I've, I've touched on this a little bit in some previous episodes. But when we talk about forgiveness, We're most so focused on when things happen to us or we're wronged and us forgiving other people. What I want to talk about today is forgiving ourselves for what we've done. That lays a heavy burden on us because we're probably our worst critic. We're the most unforgiving when it comes to making mistakes or falling into situations that we quote unquote knew better. But I want to encourage you today to forgive yourself for past things. Those things that you've been forgiven for, especially if you prayed about this thing and you trust and believe that you were forgiven for whatever happened. That's it. It's tossed into the sea of forgetfulness. But we like to bring the things up to ourselves. We like to critique ourselves. And, you know, in some cases we should critique ourselves and and take a survey on you know, maybe some past things, not necessarily drudging it up and beating yourself up about it, but look at some past things as a celebration. Look at it like a benchmark. You've passed this place and you're now in a different place in your life where you've done better things. You've done things that were good, but don't fall into the trap of not forgiving yourself. Things happen. We make mistakes. None of us are perfect. And even with that, Don't let anybody else get you to the place where you're not forgiving yourself. Don't let anybody else guilt trip you into feeling like the mistakes you made 
or who you are now, especially if you've made strives to being better, you've made strive to changing your lifestyle. I, I really hate to see when people bring up someone's past. Someone's in a place of happiness and sometimes it's almost like jealousy. Like they can't stand to see this person happy. They can't stand to see this person moved on. And so they say a little slick stuff like, well, I don't know what she's all happy about. She used to do X, Y, and Z, or I don't know what he's so happy about. I remember when he used to do this and that, and he was right here with us. Okay. But when that person has made a change and that person has done something to better themselves, we should celebrate that. And we shouldn't put upon them, you know, how we feel. Because a lot of times when people push that off on you, when you change your ways and you've done things to better yourself, they're upset with themselves because they haven't done the same thing. And they're really jealous of your bravery because you've done something that they haven't been able to do yet or maybe not be able to do at all. But what people like to do is they like to throw little shots, say little slick things so you can feel bad about yourself. You can feel bad about where you were and, and the mistakes you made and bad choices you made, but don't let that affect you. Don't get down on yourself for mistakes you've made. Even if you made a mistake that's almost a repeat or even a repeat of what you did, so what? Brush yourself off and get back on it. You know, we have people who struggle with addiction. It's not always substance abuse. It could be a number of things, and you may, may quote unquote, fall off the wagon, but get back on. Don't hold yourself in a place where you're just constantly in your thoughts about things that have happened that you didn't have control over. And even if you had control over it and you forgiven yourself, especially if you have offended people or you've wronged people, not that you really need their forgiveness to move on, but if they've forgiven you and they've let it go, why are you still holding on to it? And why are you still allowing it to hurt you? Move forward. And I know it's easier said than done. I understand that, but it takes practice. You may not get it the first time, you know, the first time it comes in your mind, you know, you may play it back a bunch of times and it may be hard to forget because our minds, a lot of things trigger thoughts, a lot of things. It can be a certain sound, a certain word, a certain smell, um, even a certain food can trigger a thought that you thought was dead, but it was just laying there resting. That's why you should always try to make sure that you truly move past something and, and don't try to fake like you're OK. That's very dangerous as well. If you're not OK, if something has bothered you, I don't like that that phrase, that idea of fake it till you make it because you're practicing being fake. And with the fake it to, until you make it, there's an expiration date until you're just fake. So you can push through or pretend to push through and act like everything is OK and be fake about it. But there's going to be a time when you have to be real with yourself and the people that you were lying to saying that you were OK. And it's not easy for all of us to find people to talk to. I get that. I understand. But if you have community then reach out to that community. Even if it's something that you may think that people may not receive well, then maybe do a test run with having a conversation with someone, something that you, you know, you may not be too bothered about sharing with someone and see how they receive that and see how they handle that. That's one way you could probably do it. It's not 100% guaranteed, but at least it'll give you a way to gauge if you can really trust this person with some deep and personal information. And even if you don't have anybody in your close circle, you can find a professional to talk to. Um, there are different websites, uh, different phone numbers you can contact. I'll, I'll put them in the show notes, people you can reach out to. Because what I don't want to happen is we have an opportunity to move forward and do things better. But our past keeps haunting us and our past keeps holding us back when that whole situation has been forgiven by everybody else involved. Sometimes we're holding on to things and not forgiving ourselves for when the people who we wrong aren't even thinking about it. They've already moved on. But yet we're holding on to this thing because it was a time where we were less than perfect. Well, guess what? Every day we're less than perfect. None of us are perfect. We strive for perfection, but we'll never achieve it. There's going to be some flaws in everything. And that's fine. Our imperfections are what make us human. Our imperfections are part of our character. Our imperfections are things that make us unique. And it's okay. And while we're here on unforgiveness, if someone's wronged you and someone did something to you offensive and 
forgive that person. Forgiving doesn't mean you forget. There's a difference between, you know, forgiving and forgetting. You can forgive somebody and and don't have to be around them and not trust them. Some people like to manipulate the whole forgiveness thing and say, well, if you really forgive me, then we can still hang out. We can still be friends and we can do that. That's not what that means. You can forgive somebody and move on. You can forgive somebody and not ever talk to them again. And that's cool because some situations involve you to step away. Some situations really require you to end certain relationships because those relationships weren't serving you as a person or those relationships weren't serving that other person. And so don't be afraid to forget and let go, even if it requires letting go of that person. But at the same time, make sure that's actually what's needed and that that you're not forgetting and letting go for the sake of conflict avoidance, because it's conversations that you don't want to have. Also have to be mindful of that as well. We're living in the age of cancel culture, right? People are quick to cancel you because your opinions don't line up with theirs. Your thoughts don't line up with theirs. And it's the craziest thing in the world to me because I don't want to have conversations with people who agree with everything I say. How am I going to learn? How am I going to grow? Like, I like to engage in conversations where people think different from me because I'm hoping in this conversation, I get a perspective that I didn't think of. Like, I want to expand my mind on situations. I want to be able to see things from other people's perspectives because we'll never be able to truly grow if we're not at least taking the time to listen to what people have to say and don't always get so upset and so quick to respond and tell the person they're wrong. When half the time when we're doing that, we're not even listening to what the person is saying. We're just waiting for an opportunity for them to finish talking so we can interject with our own feelings and our own thoughts. And the crazy thing about cancel culture is, is, it's like, it's backwards, right? Everybody wants to have their opinion matter, which is, we all have that right. If what we think is what we think, we all have that right. But everybody wants their opinions to be better than everybody else's, more important than everybody else's. So it's like, my opinion matters. Yours doesn't. You don't agree with me. You're canceled. Point blank, period. But where are we going with that? Man, I remember growing up, I mean, we had disputes with people. We didn't agree about stuff. And, you know, we might have argued. And in some cases, we might have fought the person. But after all that was over, we were friends again. And as we got older and matured, you know, we realized, hopefully we realized that things get heated and we may disagree. But that doesn't mean we have to hate each other. You can, I mean, newsflash, you can disagree with somebody and still be friends with them. You can disagree with somebody and still love them. It's okay. It's okay to not think like somebody else. It's okay for somebody else to not think like you, but it's not okay not being willing to have a conversation with each other to see where each other ideas come from or see where the other person is thinking or why they're thinking the way that they think. That's what communication is. It's getting the understanding of the person's thoughts, the person's ideas, especially with situations. You might have bumped heads with somebody, might have took a serious offense to what happened, right? But when you, it's interesting, right? How you can talk to somebody and you may have meant something one way and they took it a completely different way, but you wouldn't have had an idea that they felt like this if you didn't have a conversation. And everybody wants to say that, you know, it is common sense. But the thing about common sense is there has to be a common level of understanding. What's common sense to a mechanic might not necessarily be common sense to a chef. What's common sense to a science teacher might not necessarily be common sense to an English teacher. There has to be a common level of understanding. We live in a society where people want you to figure out stuff on your own. And at the same time, They get upset with you because you didn't know certain things. Well, which one is it? You can't have it both ways. Everybody doesn't have the same level of understanding as we do, no matter who they are. Even with generations, it's stuff that we can learn from younger generations. It's stuff that the generations older than us can learn from us. But we'll never be able to know if we don't have those conversations. If you're not willing to let somebody tell you their opinion or how they feel about something, how will you know if your opinion is the best opinion? 
And that's another part I want to go to. When somebody tells you something or they explain something to you, especially with giving you direction to do something, nine times out of ten, they're not saying it's the only way. They're just saying it's a way out of several ways to do something. And maybe if we open our maybe if we open our hearts and minds and be more receptive to what people are saying, we'll get a better understanding. The world is not going to get better if we just care about what we think and nobody else's opinions matter. If we don't get to the root of the problems where why people are so angry. And so with that, I just want to encourage you to forgive yourself, forgive others, but forgive yourself first. And when you forgive yourself, truly forgive yourself and leave it in the past. If it comes up, it shouldn't bother you if you truly forgiven yourself. And that's a lesson that you could teach somebody else. Like, I think I, I, the strong believer that our experiences and the things that we go through are so that we can help somebody else avoid those same twists and turns and so their path will be easier. So please, please, please take care of yourself, take care of your mind, take care of your heart, take care of your body, and be encouraged. Find somebody to talk to, don't hold things in, forgive yourself, and forgive others. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Terrence B. Elmore, and this is the place where poetry meets conversation. Hit that follow button and turn on your notifications so you won't miss an episode. Check out my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. Also connect with me on Instagram at thebrownsugarcafe. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, remember, keep pushing forward.